when you make a film, you are the only one who exactly knows what should be in the film. The same way with a photograph. When I prepared my first fiction in 1954, La Pointe Court, I had done a lot of photos to give myself ideas how I would frame and, and understand the people, speak with them, giving them images of themselves, you know. I'm interested in that really. I love to be a filmmaker because it includes light, dialogue, music, mixing and the, and the editing, which is such interesting screenwriting, you know. I'm passionate for that work. But sometimes I go back to still image, sometimes I mix them, sometimes I do an installation in which, you know, I use, well, it's offered to me. I can do whatever I wish if it has a shape that can be share shareable. That's what I want. I want people to share the image, not even sometimes understanding what I put in it. They have to use their own age, culture, feeling, ability to see. They have to use that to, to make the translation or the interpretation of what they see. So it's, it's offering like a field, you know, of imagination. And people do what they want. When I came back from Cuba, I'd been there in end of 62 and 63, January 63. I had in mind to make a film with these photos. To then make a shooting like this, what we call bon titre, to shoot the photos and do some movement in the photo and to make a film. It's a film called Salut les Cubains, Haile de Cubanos. It's part of my way of being, if possible, at the time, at the right time. I was lucky, or I had a good feeling that to be somewhere when there is enthusiasm, hope, very joyful and daring. What I got at the time was a country so proud to have been this declaring Cuba Libre, which means freedom, and their own program. And at the time, they were very enthusiastic and I, I met a population and I was alone, I could go everywhere. You know, I traveled, I spoke Spanish, so I could ask questions to people. And I had a good feeling, very good feeling. And I think it appears in the photos. People are, oh, you know, what, what I would meet. I, would I didn't take monuments or even buildings, even though some buildings were beautiful, but I like people. And they represent what I wanted to understand from that country. Then I wanted to be serious, to have the President of the Republic, the Minister of Agriculture, the Premier Secretary, you know. I, I did my job, but also because I was interested in Cuban music that comes from different sources, from Africa, from Haiti, from France. I tried to meet people involved in that different uh, approach of music. So I, I use the music also in the film. Benny Moray chante et danse pour nous un son de Montugno, type de rythme dérivant du chant paysan. Que solo las cubanas acarician su cara, su cara, su cara. Que solo las cubanas acarician su cara. But as photography, I met strange people, very interesting, you know, and people in the street. They had that Cuban blood of dancing and loving cha-cha-cha and, and rumba and caguanqua, a lot of local rhythm and songs, socialism and cha-cha-cha. Well, you know, it's still a country like South America, you know, they, they are related to music in a very strong way. So it's everywhere, all the time, and I, I like that very much. I made a portrait of Fidel Castro that I had asked to meet. And they gave me a little appointment. I had half an hour. He was near the water in a little restaurant. He's between two stones. I felt he has stone wings. And he looked very good and he was a, very agreeable to me because I spoke Spanish. And he did try to sell the, the program. You know, he spoke like a normal person speaking to a normal person. I've always worked on that. How do we deal with the border between still images and moving images? Sometimes, like I made a film about one picture I took called Ulysse that I took in 1954. I made a film about a photo. And also once I had a photo, I thought, 
a, a, you know, a snapshot. In a snapshot, what happened just before and after? I made a film once that I wrote a screenplay, a short three-minute film, to try to imagine what preceded that moment of the snapshot. So I'm very intrigued. Also in cinema, I'm intrigued, which is out of frame and the frame itself. So in the third part of my life, which is now more than 10 years ago, I in also did triptychs in which the middle doesn't move and the side move because I want to reconcile, you know, black and white and color, still imagine movement, fiction and documentary by using all these possibilities that are offered to us. I try to do something which is questioning the, the look of the people look at and the image itself. Since the image doesn't exist if nobody looks at it. And that's the look we give to an image. I mean, fulfill remplir, fills the image with meaning, intention, memories. You know, every person is unique when he or she looks up an image. It's an incredibly big world, the world of photography. People can pick and choose what they wish, what they need, how it fulfills what we need. We need to be impressed. We need to be uplifted by emotion or by thoughts or by impression or by pleasure of the image. So all these things together are that many people love photography and many people do it. So now that all cameras have become smaller, smaller, more easy, you know, it's interesting because I remember and I have been filmed using the, La Chambre, the big thing, with the lens here. Everybody now has a camera, a small camera, or even more, with the smartphone, they turn it and they do, not only they take picture, but they do self-portrait with the selfies. So now the image is everywhere. And what is the difference to be a professional? I don't even know. I, I am interested in the time because I'm into the time. My own life is time, <laughs> getting to be shorter and shorter, but we are written, I mean, our life is written in time. And the, the, our physical time, but also the history time, the country time, you know, the family time. So we have layers of perceiving the time. I even made a film called Cleo from five to seven, in which 90 minutes were filmed, minute after minute. With the real time, you could see the film with your watch. If it started at five, you could check that 5.10 on the film was 5.10. And in the cinema and in the photos, we can play with that. Because in a way, you know, being an artist is playing with concepts, with reality, and the way of looking at it. In a way, I try to reinvent reality, to make it be seen differently. Uh, eventually, wake up in every viewer something personal or something related to his or her culture. Whenever I travel, I end up trying to know more about the artists, why they do things, how they do it. And I learned a lot from them, and I also love them because they do something for us. I try to be honest about what I speak about, because I'm not, well, I'm not stupid, but I'm not intellectual in the terms of, I don't get my ideas from reading philosopher or psychologue or psychoanalysis that I know nothing about. I try to be near what's happening and feel the tension. And you understand that nowadays in Paris, since there was this horrible, horrible terrorist attack, we got shocked, you know. And everybody is saying, you know, life is so fragile. And because you have some craziness, political craziness, religion craziness, fanatic, all kinds of things. We try, as people getting the images, to grab what can be felt through an image. All the photographers will tell you that. They, grab, they try to be with the people, with what's happening, and sometimes just behind. What do we feel about? And that, for that, we have to go there. Maybe not film, maybe not even taking photographs. You know, sometimes just be with people is enough because it feeds you and later you do something 
which has the memory or the drama of the drama of the pain of the people. So I'm not a reporter. I'm an artist, that's what I feel. <laughs>